All right, guys, welcome back to our State of the K2 Lethal Zone Guide. Um, I'm really happy to be back into this, guys. Last episode, uh, we ended up getting a red talent. I showed you guys how to, you know, pull from your legacy pool and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, we're going to be continuing our playthrough today. We got some big moves ahead like of us. Zombies. Fascinating. Uh, we're starting to get to that mid-game push where one of your main focal points is going to just be play cards. You're going to start, you know, uh, focusing on what parts of the map you want to take out and, and, and do it strategically is how I try to tell people, like, you know, try to have some kind of system. Don't just randomly go at play cards. Kill play cards that are going to benefit you in some way, shape, or form. You know what I mean? If, I, if I'm like, hmm, you know what? I'm going to kill a play card today. And I go over here and I, you know, I kill this one. Like... What am I gaining from killing that play card? You know, is this play card somewhere that I want to loot? You know what I mean? For instance, if I'm like, you know what? I really need a lot of materials, resources. This play card is swallowing up a huge shopping center with a fire station. There's tons of resources. Maybe in the potential outpost that I want in this area. That would be something that you would target. Or how I do it is I like to create a front. I like to completely get everything in front of me. I don't want things above me behind me that way if i do accidentally wake up a heart i have hordes coming from all different directions i like to have a nice front that way i can easily place outposts if i have to counter uh the incoming zombies uh so that's what i do is i like for instance i think on this side of the map we only have these three left so that's kind of been my target and then once we get these three cleared then i'll start you know pushing into lull a, a bit and, we'll, and and that that's kind of how i i push is kind of strategic but uh yeah, but welcome back, guys. Today, I was thinking, because um, we're trying, ultimately, we're trying to move into this new base. Um, I'm trying to figure out right now what sixth survivor I want to get, like from where, what do I want their fifth to be? I'm thinking about trying to get somebody with chemistry. Who do I want to recruit from? Because some of these enclaves actually have some pretty decent enclave bonuses I wouldn't really want to lose. This one here, I thought I could get rid of the healthy homesteaders, um, break them down. And uh, these ones, yeah, they got the food income, booze delivery. I could break them down. We'll see if any of those are a uh, chemist. And uh, it's probably going to be between this enclave and this enclave. Because I could break them down and recruit for free. But uh, I wanted to start off. I had this uh, kill five freaks with rifles. And I kind of pop popped up the map. And I seen I had some freaks right here right outside of base now this rifle that i have is a 22 i did throw a crappy suppressor on it it's about to break um so i gotta be careful got stuff to do see you later but while it's still dark figured can't really see much okay there we go let's go around and see if we can hunt some freaks real quick uh because the bounty that we complete by doing this i believe is uh you get the Echo Suppressed uh, 22, which is really, really good gun. It is so dark right now. Okay, so her skills are pretty hot, pretty high. There it is. That's two freaks. You think the juggernauts are evolving? Uh, we got a juggernaut and screamer, and the screamer and bloater over there. Now I don't want to engage with the feral. The feral I would definitely like to leave alone. Um, the screamer and the bloaters are easy targets. Now, if this 22 had a scope, it'd be even easier because we about to hit him from long range. I do really got to get kind of close. At least to the screamer, we got to get kind of close. That guy's even faster than a normal feral. There it is. So we're short one freak. I don't want to dink around near that feral. I could hit that screamer over there. Okay. 
But yeah, this is a pretty low cost, low effort bounty. Um, <clears throat> granted, you need a rifle. Uh, there is a bit of risk. You're making noise. You're using ammo. But as long as you're hitting your shots and you're hunting the right freaks, it's really not that big of a deal. My thing is, I don't want to. I would have to get close to the screamer to shoot it with this 22 because it doesn't have a sight. Okay, right on the back side here is a, another screamer, and that is bounty complete. Here it is. Uh, so that was for... Oh, no, that one was for the 50 cal. Yeah, that one was for the 50 cal. All right, so that was definitely a, a, a bounty worth doing. Now, for those of you guys in Lethal Zone, if you don't know, 50 cals are actually... They're kind of useful because um, they one-shot Plague Ferals if you hit them in the head. It, will, it breaks through the armor and just kills them in one hit. So if you are looking for a way to... Deal with ferals that there it is. Now, granted, 50 cal ammo is very expensive. They are very loud guns. Um, but worst case scenario, you, you'll be able to just tag them real quick, knock them out, and be done with them. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to get my inventory squared away. And uh, I want to go scout out. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to put in the... Yeah, we'll, we'll go scout out these enclaves for their fifth skills. We'll see what they're working with, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so both guns. Oh, no, that one isn't. All right, everything looks good. Um... I'll bring a little bit of fire, just in case we get jumped by something nasty. As we know, feral hordes are now spawning. <clears throat> now, I do have a chemistry textbook. Technically, I could recruit somebody without a fifth. So if I can't find a chemist, then uh, we could just train somebody. Now, we'll go down here first to the bootleggers. Let me check and see. Is my... No can do. So we still have 24 minutes on my plague disruptor. So we don't have to worry about hearts waking up. Once the sun comes up, we're going to go on a little offensive. I don't know exactly what heart I want to hit yet. Whether I want to hit the one down here or if I want to start working at the two on top. I was thinking about saving the two up top for when we moved. I wonder if that's actually blood I'm tasting in the air. Now, somebody brought up uh, in the comments, they were like, oh, Brian's trolling us driving the the van instead of the... Yeah, I drive the van, this one, because uh, the Bloodmobile is actually really good on gas. It's not the right. It's not the same as the regular cargo van. Um, a lot of zombies coming. Um, it's it's pretty decent on fuel. It's not much of a difference between this and the um, the starter car, and this and it has more durability and more storage space. You know what I mean? So of course I'm just gonna drive this one. And plus we're not really hurting on fuel right now, anyway. So Let's it's it's yeah. not something okay. I really need to uh, worry about right now. Now if my fuel was tight and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I would be more considerate. Um, and you know trying to pinch every penny gas wise. But right now we're doing really really well. Okay, so fishing. Hey, good to see you again. Bartending. Hey, a friendly face. Bartending. So, no go. So, we'll go check the other enclave and see if they have um, somebody without a fifth skill. I know they don't have a chemist, but we're going to see if they have somebody without a fifth skill. Now, sorry if I sound super congested, guys. I'm actually. 
sick as hell. But no rest for the wicked, right? Okay, so yeah, moving into this new base is gonna, it, it's its not really gonna change too much. It will give us power, we'll be have access to power, because as a generator, we'll be able to start crafting some more high-end stuff okay. in our workshop. Um, okay, so he doesn't have a fifth, so he's a potential. Hi. Gardener, no. Oh, hey there. Well, I thought her thing said 160, I was like, Jesus Christ, what hey, the hell? Yo. And he doesn't have a fifth. So they're both equally unleveled for You're the most part. Well, this guy's got higher shooting, but everything else is low. All right. Um, comes down to let me see what weapons you have. He's got that and a nine millimeter. You've got a hatchet and. kind of gun you got dude and a potential nine millimeter maybe even a 357 depends on that that style gun could be multiple different calibers um we'll grab the mark let me see that they have anything i want to buy first mm. now we gotta be careful because i don't want to spend too much uh, because we need how much we need, what 1500 for the base? Yeah, 1500. They can maybe buy I these, uh, like. <coughs> cool. Sounds good. uh, of one of these first aid kits is not a bad deal, mainly because uh, first aid kits are quite expensive to make, and you don't get them until you get a level three workshop. And I think you also need somebody who's trained in uh. In medicine in order to craft them so let's recruit this hey, dude what do you sure have, didn't have anything yep. else we wanted nope you know what? let's buy this buy the loose ammo what up we could use someone with your skills on our team there we go okay so we are now up to six survivors we can move now at any point uh, what I want to do is before you move, there's a couple things you want to prepare, and that is you want to make sure your vehicles are parked in parking spots. That way they transfer over to the new base and, uh, and whatnot. So Okay, so two of our bounties are quite, uh, we just need to collect a bag of materials and we need to use some, uh, use some gas cans, which the, that actually needs some fuel. To so we'll get this parked in a parking spot, that way it will transfer over to the new base. Now once we get moved, it's a little annoying. Moving bases is it's not as bad as other games, obviously. You know, it's that you don't gotta hand move all your resources, but you do gotta get your, your stuff built back up, your your um your facilities or whatnot. So we're gonna have to get our garden back up. Um we're gonna have to get our infirmary and workshop. Let's see. We'll worry about him when we get back. 
All right, so let's grab that fuel. Um, we'll go move. We'll start off, start off the day with that. So it's gonna take a little bit to get settled back in. I'm gonna have to figure out beds and whatnot. So as you guys see, we've we've pushed quite far into the playthrough, and um, even at this moment now, there's no rush for me to move out of my my current base. You know, I, I'm at, I feel comfortable to where I can, but that's what I think a lot of people when they start playing State of Decay, they're like in a rush to get into these bigger bases, which sometimes are actually downgrades from the starter base because you're gonna lose all your beds, you're gonna lose you know, and you're gonna gain large slots that you're not even gonna be able to use early on. So that's why I try to tell people, don't be in a rush to move because honestly, a lot of the times you're gonna put yourself in a worse situation um, moving into some of these other bases. So I would, I would tell you a rule of thumb is Wait until you can afford to move into one of the, like the higher tier mid mid tier bases, the higher grade mid tier bases. this place is going to have any zombies in it seems to be locked so this is going to be our new humble abode nice warehouse base uh, now you can very easily beat the game in the space, very easily. Um, With a little elbow grease, this could be a great place to stay. Uh, this is actually a pretty good base. I feel like these more and more distribution, like warehouse bases, kind of go under the radar for people. Um, you know, everybody always thinks you know, container for this, this, and that. Like, container for it's good, but um, this this one is it's a pretty good base yet. It's a pretty pretty good base. All right, um, let's see. So we have everything we need to move. Now what we're going to be gaining is... So we're going to definitely lose beds. I think we're going to need one bed. So we'll have to upgrade this. Machine shop, Jenny. Huge fuel storage. All right, let's do it. Here we go, guys. Now we gotta hit the ground running. Okay, so we're moved in. Instantly want to check. So we're down a bed. I think I can upgrade this. Yep. White noise generator built in. What? Oh, whoa, hold on, hold on, hold on. So how much fuel does this use? Backup generator takes one a day. Not bad at all, guys. We can activate it to be white noise and it's completely silent. Not that it really matters with this new system when you don't have uh, infestations and stuff awake, but one fuel a day and now we have base power. Uh, we have a level three workshop built in, as you guys can see. Super good. We can craft all the, 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 the goodies. Fuel bombs now because we have the base power. Um, this is nice. Uh, we can do the, the better suppressors and attachments. 
Storage could be increased, actually. So we'll get that going. A hundred max fuel storage. That's absolutely insane. Become a fuel dealer. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get the infirmary. Okay. And then we need kitchen. And then instead of doing us garden, we'll use one of these large slots and do a farm. But I think we're going to be short. Yeah, we're short help right now. Uh, so we're going to end up doing a, a nice big farm. Because what is our food outs right now? So we're losing seven food a day. Once I get that food, yeah, we'll be good. We'll be good. See you later. So I haven't checked the curveballs. Do I have any curveballs active right now? No, nothing. We're good. Okay, so it's uh, we got this Rams down the road. We'll go Hello. scoop this that up. From the network. As some of you know, I grew up in a place called Trumbull Valley. The valley has seen tough times like everywhere else, but it's bouncing back thanks to the strong folks who live there. If you're looking for a good place with good people, you should find your way to Trumbull Valley. All right, so I'm going to grab these. We'll go recover that vehicle real quick now that we're over here. Watch out, we have a juggernaut right across the base. Now, the only thing I'm worried about uh, about this base is outpost placement for mines. Um... Guess it won't really matter because it depends on where we get the uh, a nice choke point set up down the road. Here, kitchen is done. Firmary level two. The farm building. Now, this is kind of what I was explaining last episode, where people have this, like... Uh, and I used to do the same. It's like an impulse to just kill zombies. Like, they just can't walk past them. Uh, here, there's no point in wasting resources... Um, stamina, just come grab what I need to grab and keep it moving. Now, this road does have some uh, military stuff on it. We might go scout out. I thought I already did that. But I don't see the icon on the map, so... Nice, got myself a nice pickup truck. Hey, we need a hand over here. Strength in numbers, right? So they want some food. That'll make them allies, or at least friendly, I believe. The reason why I stopped here is there's a, uh, yeah, so it's looted. It's like there's a special weapons crate in a camp, but it's all looted out. Military site is there. I don't know if I should just go on foot. Nah, we'll, we'll get the car. It's a bit far. 
Do that. Got to clear these guys out around my car, because if not, as soon as I start up the engine, they're all just going to jump on it. So a lot of these guys we got to just clear out real quick. And there's a barrel horde behind me, too. Awesome. So it's not pre-looted. A lot of the times, guys, on lethal, this spot is uh, looted out. Let's see how many containers. Three, at least. Seven. I just want to go on record that some people are really getting on my nerves. So military stash. No, take a seven lootables. This is a big, big, big find. Hopefully we don't get freaking robbed. Let's see. Please give us the goods. Okay, this will be useful. Okay, stabilizing foam, some shoddy shells. Nice M4. I'll take it. Could use the 556 five, mag in it. Better than a poke in the eye. Bolts. The M4 itself, I don't really need all that much. I mean, it'd be a decent base defense weapon, but I already got the uh, the better M4. Nothing here. Of course. Two frag grenades, that's not bad either. <clears throat> this is a lot of stuff to carry. So that was an alright haul. Um, nothing crazy. Nothing to write home about by any means. And that right there is why I usually park up against stuff. I thought the horde was far enough away that I'd be able to get in and kind of bounce, but as you can see, I was wrong. Bloater near the side of the road, so let's make sure we go. Why? Well, I just want to make sure he doesn't pop on me. Juggernaut shit. So we gotta be careful. Not to aggro that juggernaut. Well, time for me to move on. If you ever end up in trouble, feel free to stop by. Oh, we're good. So we're able to recover that vehicle. Uh resource wise we're looking great farm is build built up get the water in, in it i could do a uh, rain collector and actually have base water you know what yeah let's do that let's do a rain collector because uh, we're gonna need water for not only our farm but for like our kitchen um and to stuff like that we're gonna, we're gonna need it now, I want to swap over to our new survivor. We're going to train him in chemistry. Because she's going to be getting tired here and soon anyways. Go get him outfitted. 
Damn, Miss Kim's mission. Not not that was a big deal. That scream is gonna drown us in plague zombies. So it was at 45. 45. Not that great. Right, let's get him formally welcomed into the hoodie gang. And then his melee weapon is fine. We'll go ahead and give him these for right now. Let's see here. So, the Enclave wants food. How long do I have? I, I'm pretty sure my Plague Disruptor, yeah, a minute left on that. I could re-up it, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if it'll be worth it. So let's go ahead. Uh, if we had somebody with computers, somebody said that it gets cut in like half the cost, which that that's I'm not gonna lie, Chad. Computers is almost mandatory. Like it's it's definitely a uh, a skill you want in your community. But not only for that, because it gives you uh, the level three uh, command center. You need computers, and that's that's what you need in order to get another outpost. Anyways, so level three command center, super super clutch. But uh, the fact that it also cuts into like the plague disruptor so that is that makes. I, I honestly, I think computers will be the next skill I go for. Okay, so let's go ahead and train this dude. That's gonna come in handy. Boom. Now we got a chemist. So the rain collector. Get the water turned on. Now we are low on materials. We're getting lower on materials. Uh I would love to get this farm upgraded to level two, but we're gonna have to do a materials run. But now I'm sitting here looking like where the hell would we even go? See if any of these play cards are. Mm -mm. So we could always call on network to see if they can give us some intel on some materials. Food, ammo. Yeah, and anywhere else, we're at the push into plague territory pretty good. Our plague disruptor's going down, so. Um, I mean, I'm gonna. God damn it. We'll, we'll contact network. network. Hopefully, it's. The only thing I'm worried about is going to spawn it in, send out for some scavenging advice. in a terrible spot. We've got people on it. In Lakeview. It's all the way over here. Okay, so that looks like it might be in between play cards, actually. Uh, we could probably hit that. <clears throat> Bring the rookie out. New guy. Now, there it is. So that bounty is now complete. And uh, the reason why... Let me see here. No, we'll be good. We'll be good. Uh, we'll, we'll be able to get both this bounty done too. And um, while we're over there, the reason why I want I wanted to go over here is because we'll also we should be able to get more than just the bag of resources that we called in. We should be able to get um, a few, and I'm hoping that that area is in between play carts.
You can cut down this way, actually. Now, Plague Disruptor is down. Guys, Plague Disruptor is down. I could reactivate it, but I don't want to spend the parts right now. Uh, so I'm just going to try to be careful. But worst case scenario, if stuff does kind of get a little shaky, I'm setting off screamers a bit more than I want. I take we'll just turn it. Card, we'll turn it back on. This should clear up. Right there, Screamer. Mistake. Hold on just a bit longer, baby. So much damage my car took in that few seconds. All that to avoid, uh, that screamer going off when I crossed his bridge because it was a bit of a choke point, but I should have repositioned my vehicle a lot better than I did. Because as soon as I let that shot off it, aggro the zombies around me. Everyone is starting to talk about stuff from old days. If you can spot anything luxurious, get ready to trade it. Okay, so nice. Um, finer things in life. Bounty. Oof. It's going to be a good time to go around and sell. Ooh, nice. Found another van, too. So we are still in plague territory. So I am gonna go ahead and activate the disruptor. Just so we can real. play a bit more aggressive and not have to be super super pa Oh, plague disruptor's only 60? Now is your computers from where? My Red Talon hacker chat. I see. Even stuff stuff slips by by me. I, I like. I'm not like super. I, I. There's so many little intricacies to this game. So, hacking here gives you knowledge of computers and knowledge of programming. So we just made out like a bandit, guys. We got a Red Hat Talon gave us an extra outpost, and we have knowledge of computers, which made our plague disruptor only 60 parts, guys. There it is. And that wasn't even, I didn't even plan that. That just kind of worked out like that for me. Okay, so now that that is active, we could be a little more. Aggressive here. So I don't know why they would have materials in a house here. It's a weird area. Nope. There wasn't even the right spot. I don't know if we'll find anything here. Yeah. I figured it'd be down in these warehouses. I don't Or even up in that warehouse there. Uh you know what? We'll, we'll Said, move the car. Hmm. Of course, he screamed. Wow. 
Obviously, moving the car is going to stir up a bunch of more zombies, so we'll just we'll just move over here on foot. This is another house, though. Maybe it's the shed next to it. There's not gonna be any materials in here. As long as this is plate territory, this place ain't never gonna feel safe. No, yeah, it's gonna be the shed next to it. Okay, I'm like, dude, these are some weird plague or, or um, buildings. Generally, it, it, the materials will spawn in the the building that it like correlates with. There it is. Another talk. is another um, warehouse here, but that won't have mats. We could check this one here to where our car is, see if there's maybe some over there. Would like to screen the back of this van to see if there's any repair kits in it. My car kind of needs one for my van. So this area was not in between play cards, obviously. Um, it's very much so in the, I'm, I'm pretty sure like this is probably a play card or this. Please have a repair kit, please. Come on, come on, come on, please. Look at all that storage though, man. We gotta get this back to base. I would love to come over here and get this. Arrow back there. Screamer. That's a lot of bloaters. Four bloaters right there. Right near my damn car. Gotta drop this bag of mats. I wanna let me reveal the building first, make sure there's even materials in there. Nope. Then we checked. These warehouses are weird. For some reason they don't have uh materials in them. For whatever reason, there's the other play cart. And then there's a police station down there. I know that's a, a big spot that a lot of people want to check early game. Because uh, it's one of the, especially Lethal, it's one of the only gun shop or places um, with a lot of like military or police grade loot. I always tell people though, it's you're taking a pretty big risk, especially early game coming over here. Because uh, it's on the complete opposite side of the map. It. That van, though, there is a. Uh... No, yeah, I, I could get repair kits out of this fire department here. They tend to have them. I don't remember if I already. Ooh, what was the supply drop, guys? Should we... Yeah, let's go scope. That. I don't know what that was. It's not a curveball, right? Well, it might be a curveball. I don't know. Let's go see what that is real quick.
Whoa, a lot of plague zombies around here. There was just a random supply drop on the map. Pretty sure it came from something. I, I just don't know what. God damn. I had a whole bunch of trade items in it. Yeah, so I think it came from that, uh, that quest or the uh, curveball. Okay, so they wanted food. The intersection there seemed a little bit busy. I don't know if it would be a good idea to stop there right now and try to get a bag of food for that enclave. Yeah, be okay. Yeah, it's not too bad. You know what? Let's also see if we can find a repair kit in this. There's even a Dewey's Hardware over there. We can get material. Man, this place is not bad. Have some news to share. I think I might have already got the... I know I came here for fuel. I think. I don't know if I also got the repair kits out of here. This one. Perfect. Shit, so should we swap over to the other van and just come back for this one? I think we might go grab the other van and we'll swap it for this and then we'll come back over here with like the starter car or something and get our blood mobile back It was a really weird interaction. I didn't break the window. The whole goal there was to break the window and kill the zombie. <laughs> it was really strange. Damn, the whole place is fucking locked up. Seriously? So we'll just grab that. <clears throat> we'll come back here another time and loot. I just wanted to get the food. We'll go grab the van. <clears throat> 
come back down here, swap out our stuff, and try to get over to that enclave. For real? Let them know we're coming. Good group of zombies over here. Try to hug close up to that. That way we can avoid them. Repair. This place ain't never gonna feel safe. Hopefully the middle of town didn't get too crazy because I would like to recover the rest of my stuff. Man, definitely controls so much worse than the the bloodmobile. This shit is heavy. And we'll come back for this. <clears throat> but yeah, all this extra storage is just so good. Let me check this warehouse here real quick. I think this is another one that won't have materials. Nope. Oh, fuck, dude. Get the hell out of there. Now these van, as you can see, the fuel ticks down pretty quick. These things are not great, so I would not make this a daily driver by any means. The Bloodmobile is decent on fuel. Um, this thing, though, it, this is like, hey, I, I got a big, big loot run I want to go on. Um, you, you bring this, or like a big sale run or something like that. We have enough gas to go to Enclave and back to base. Sucks because this Enclave is taking up one of the good How's fuel sites. Got you some, some of that food you wanted. Thank you. Peace out. All right, they're now friendly. Thank they you. they were an enemy enclave at one point. I found a couple of things while I was out scavenging. They do got a bag of mats. We'll grab them. 
Because we're going to be doing a big sale right now anyways, so... That is a lot to carry. Hey, come on in. Hey, buddy. I almost missed you. Okay, so we made a little bit of the influence back. Um... Like I said, I'm hoping we got enough fuel to make it back to base. We should be okay, though. Oh, so this is where all the plague zombies hang out. Huh. Wonderful. We could have swung by the bounty broker, too, to grab those bounties, but... No, screw it. We're here... We could go on foot. Uh. Also get materials out of there. Now, one of the guns we're about to get, guys, the Echo S1, is one of the best guns in the game. Um, it's a it never jams or breaks. It's suppressed and it shoots 22. So it's crazy crazy quiet And it's very very cheap never jams breaks um, It's it's just all around a great great gun ammo capacity is decent on it, too It's not super super high. That's the guns weakest point, but I think it holds like eight Hello, my friend Let us okay, so see what's Cash these in Let's see if we can grab. Improvised weapon station is pretty cool. Allows you to make one of the best uh, 5.56 rifles in the game. Yeah, a lot of this stuff is quite grindy. Fifteen zombies with rifles isn't bad. Two juggernauts with assault rifles. Yeah. This is one of my favorite guns in the game, though. The HB SD Blackout's a really, really clean gun. Sniper shotgun's really clean, too. But, again, some of these have us go out of our way of what we plan on doing. Um... As you can see, that, that pistol that we just got, it's a thousand influence. They are not cheap. Recruit one survivor, drive seven clicks. Get, um... So for right now, I'll just throw this An one on. Choice. We'll passively just kill hordes anyways. But now we got this here. Eight rounds. Yeah. Got a built-in suppressor, super quiet, and it has a little scope. There's sight. Uh, it's really, really good gun, and you just never have to worry about it jamming or breaking. And like I said, it's nice and quiet for a 22. Like that guy over there heard it, but nobody else. And we uh, were able to get my hands out of 50 cal, too. About to lose that food supply request. Lizetta picked up the supplies 
pick the supplies clean. They've eaten so much to the point they're struggling to move about. <laughs> Zombies deal less damage. Supply food uh. crate. Okay, so we can get a bag of mats out of here. Two bags, actually. There it is. So we're in the area where the zombies should be moving slower, right? None of these guys have blue eyes, though, so I think... Yep, there's one. Plague territory. This place ain't never gonna feel safe. Three bags of mats. We got some fuel, so we don't have to worry about struggling to get back. We do have to be careful with this bloater in the road, though. Should be able to cut into here and avoid them. So let's get back to base. We'll get some of the, the rest of the base building up. Yeah, when you when you first move, you want to make sure that you're uh, you're getting everything built up back up to at least what you had it at. Uh, one of the downsides though, Elite, though, is crafting things in the base is so expensive. So you're gonna have to do like multiple resource runs in order to you know get new stuff. But now we're sitting we're sitting pretty nice. We have we have enough resources I can upgrade my farm now. And we completed that other bounty. I need to work on something in my own for a bit. Kim wants to do a mission with her brother again. My brother worked as a cop in this town, but I haven't seen him since the outbreak. So we get that up again. Yeah, so we're good on beds at the moment. We don't have to worry about beds. Um in this other large slot, the only other thing I can think of is when we promote a leader, either A, we go trade depot, which will help us, you know, resources won't be an issue really at all. And then, uh, but we will have to kind of, you know, manage our influence and trade network and stuff like that. But we'll kind of make, simplify my, my rounds. I'll be able to do most of it here at base. Or we go sniper tower, which will help us out. We can go armory, which will allow me to focus more on bullets and production, things like that. I'm not exactly sure what I want to put here in this slot. Or we can go like auto shop, get our vehicles all um, upgraded nice, nice. There's, there's, there's a couple different uh, directions we could take this. But yeah, this, this base is... It's nice. We're comfortable right now. We have everything that we had in the other base and now a little bit more, you know, with the power and the machine shop and shit. 
farm was upgraded from the uh, little small storage we have. I was thinking about maybe trying to produce fuel. Uh, but in order to produce fuel, you need a still and a lot of food. Because we we'd have to make biofuel. But the cool thing is, is uh, we can replace this rain collector with the still. More than usual, I mean. But we're, we, are, we will need more materials for that. So I believe the still is what, thirteen? Yeah, thirteen. Hmm. You know what? Yeah, let's uh, let's get the still. It'll give me more options than the rain collector. Oh shit, I don't have a person available really. Let's cancel that upgrade. Go still. That'll take about 12 minutes. We ought to huddle up and make a plan because whatever we got ain't working. Right, let's see. So I want to go hit a play cart. I just don't know which one. I think we're gonna, we'll do this one. Yeah, we'll do this one. All right, hold on one sec. All right, hold on. All right, I wanted to I wanted to do this plague heart during the daytime, but obviously uh, that that's not that's not gonna happen. So uh, we're we're just gonna have to push it. Under. Oh, there's another supply drop here too, right near. Uh, or enclave there <clears throat> that's probably gonna have more of the trade items in it but not really worth pushing i want to i want to get this play cart done right now uh so let's go ahead we're gonna swap survivors to who should we bring um kim's not a bad choice yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll bring Kim. She's our hygiene person. She's extra plague resistant. How do we honor the fallen? Yeah. Don't yeah. Leave them behind, but you can't take them home. If I can, I, I like to hold on to something they carried. Helps to ease the pain. Oh, I better get to it. Yeah, so um, in Lethal Zone, as you guys know, uh, like I told you in the, early in the episode, uh, we're, we're getting to that point where it's going to be about like consistency and trying to push the play cards and uh, without overextending because that, that's one of the issues is, uh, but I'm not doing her quest anyways, is you try to do too much, that's when you're going to start getting in trouble. That's when you're going to start waking up play cards and not having the means to... To deal with them, uh, you know what I mean. So you want to kind of stay structured, stay organized, and push the play court play cards with uh, with a plan. And that, that's what I've been trying to do here is stay nice and strategic. And yeah, this one should be should be no problem. We should have more than enough resources to take it. But uh, we got it. We do have to develop some kind of consistency because you you got a lot of play cards that you need to start working your way through. So getting a nice rhythm, a rotation, and remember to build and spend, build and spend. Don't just spend, 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 spend. So say you do you know two, three play cards, and then you take you know a couple of days in game to go around, build up resources, work with your trade partners, get more influence, buy more stuff build back up and then go push you don't always have to like okay I'm, I'm i'm scraping by with the bare minimum of resources let me do this play card like no like take your time um by this point the game's already going to be ramped up pretty high so it's not like you're really the only time you're ever going to be against the clock is if you wake up a play card and now you're battling the infestation system and stuff like that that's the only time the game's really going to put that kind of pressure on you where it's like okay i need to act now um but other than that if, as long as you're managing your uh plague disruptor properly and stuff like that you should be you should be more than good you should be more than good okay so let's grab our guns we're gonna go double nine mil on this we'll rock the this we're gonna bring the 
Big Heals, Plague Cure. Now I got five frag grenades, guys. That is huge. But what I want is some more of these, the fuel bombs. My base fuel is... It's borderline, guys. It, it is not the greatest. We'll get nine fuel bombs. 80 parts, which I'm not too worried about. Four fuel. We'll get nine of them. That's decent. Okay, so we'll grab a stack of those. Stack of grenades. As you guys know, we're going to go with the sledgehammer heavy weapon. I'll bring a backup melee weapon because, as you guys know, we're going to clear out the heart, try to get that one one on one time with it. So we'll bring a backup melee weapon. But other than that, other than the fire and the explosives, I personally don't have really anything else I would I can use to fight the heart. No smoke grenades, um, nothing like that. Okay. We do got a cure on us. Oh, the bullets, bullets, bullets. Yep. So we'll grab a... Grab a stack of 9 mil real quick. Should be more than enough ammo. We'll just top off the stack. That should be more than enough ammo to deal with this. We got fire. We got everything we need. Worst case scenario, like I said, if we get overwhelmed, we don't have enough resources to take the heart at the time, you just leave. You literally just leave. Uh, it's just... Okay, see you later. I got a thing. A lot of people, they have this, this, uh... This feeling, it's like once they get there and involved in the play card, it's like they're, they're stuck. You know what I mean? They have to stay. They gotta finish it. It's like, no. If you get too much pressure on you, you just leave. Grab my other car out the front. This, I think, might need a repair kit. Ooh. Of course. So we're going to deal with this Juggy. He's a little close to the base. I'd rather deal with him on my own terms uh, than on his terms. drag him this way hit this before he makes too much noise watch out for that bloater there Feral pack, of course. So in that case, um, realistically, if you guys aren't equipped, which I, I mean, technically I wasn't, I just got lucky that I kind of heard the feral, but um, that, that's how quick it is with triple feral pack when it jumps you. Um, and that's why I told you guys, fire is your best plan of action when it comes to those guys, because... Uh, you can get them rolling around in the fire for quite a bit. As you guys seen, those two over here were rolling around, gave me enough time to 1v1 this one. And you can just keep repeating that uh, to, to usually get away. Uh, if, if you get overwhelmed like that, you could have ran those ferals into your base and kind of just had your whole team kind of try to mob up on them. Uh, but yeah, that's that was definitely dangerous as hell. Got lucky that we didn't even get touched. I did use a lot of ammo, though. Oh, uh, you know, we'll polish up this handgun. Uh, no, it's hot. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, so we're going to top off our fire. Okay. 
And I'll grab a repair kit for this. The reason why I'm taking this car is we're just going to clear hearts. Um, so when it comes to if, if this gets blown up out of play car, I won't feel as bad if I, you know, I won't lose. It won't be a big loss by any means. And, and granted, after this heart, I might swing over and uh, get my blood mobile back. I'll grab a gas can. I'm going to try to not use it because I don't want to waste the fuel. This might be too much to carry. And when I mean waste of fuel, I mean like if I swap this car out and I put a you know fill up the tank, now it's just gonna be sitting across the map. I, I'm even upset about putting that damn repair kit in it, realistically. But we'll see how our ooh bloater. Now, is this plate heart in the zone? Nope, it's right outside of it. Just find that in this, so it doesn't matter. Now, if we do get super, super overwhelmed, guys, we can always if run the play cart, back to the uh, Enclave over here. Have them help us out with anything that might be uh, putting a lot of pressure on us. So what I'm gonna do, Disgusting. I'm just gonna kind of, we're gonna be a little loud on this one. Um, just to kind of get everybody bunched up. should be pretty cleared out. Even though the zombies can just jump through the windows, um, doing this still buys you a few seconds. Fire ready. Heard the feral, but he hasn't come over here yet. 
he could have got hung up on the oh here we go a screamer oh shit good grab so a survivor just spawned in here there anyone out there they need help i'll have you out of there soon guys outside I was trying to I was trying to be cheap again guys I was trying to get away without using uh, another stim but What I'm doing there, we're just trying to bunch them all up. That survivor didn't make it, but I was not going to go and start focusing on him. I mean, granted, he could have had something for us, but it is what it is. We'll loot his body. Oh, yeah, little G26. Some flashbangs. Bunch of crap we could sell. So we got, we took a lot of damage there. Mainly, I got grabbed twice, twice, two times. Well, one time it was uh, just me um, messing up my grab and push, and I tried to grab, and he was facing me, so that that hurt a bit. Nice, we actually just replenished our. This might be too much to carry. And then uh, I got grabbed once through a fi the fire, which I didn't. I don't, I, I don't quite understand how that happened, but it is what it is. And then uh, I got grabbed again right here. I had my camera this way and wasn't paying attention to what was behind me. And we got grabbed three times in that engagement. Actually, I don't even think I want to sell any of this stuff. Break the gun down and shit for, for parts. Uh, the feral, I think I stuck down here somewhere. Uh, Cause he never came. Now, um, I was trying to save resources. That I, cause I realized I brought all stims, and the thing about the stims is they're so potent, they're so powerful, but they're very, very hard to get your hands on. I can manufacture the energy drinks. So generally I'll use a lot of energy drinks and I'll pop a stim like once per play cart and then use energy drinks for the rest of it. So I was trying to be cheap there <laughs> out in the front and I was like really not wanting to spend any more of the, but I had to use one more or else we would have just kept taking more damage. Now what we're doing is we're driving back over to where I left my van or my, my blood mobile.
Yep, and we're out of gas. Damn heavy weapon. We're still shuttling the loot into this. We're good. Oh. <laughs> so we got a juggernaut right there. That smoke we do not want. <clears throat> not that we couldn't kill him, but it would just take all of our resources and shit. Like I got grenades in here, but no point in wasting that on him. Because Juggernauts will just do it. another one will just respawn, you know what I mean, guys? So it's better to focus your resources on things like play cards that aren't gonna respawn and if I take out the nearest play cart, this might clear up. You got some time? We could use another pair of hands over here. I was like, y'all don't even know what button I pushed. So yeah, we got we got the play cart done, got our blood mobile back, got some looting. We got moved. We actually made some pretty big moves this, this episode, guys. Um, the focal point obviously is going to be trying to get ready for more hearts. Yeah, just more play cart prep. Um, I got the two to the north of me in my AO, which obviously would be nice to 
just get the whole top of the map clear. But clearing those two play cards isn't going to net me any, like, location. So, honestly, the play card I'm probably going to hit next will be this one. Probably this one and this one. Because this will at least free up um, the town here. Give me plenty of new places to loot. This one won't really do much for me either, though. But... I feel like it'll definitely be better to go for this play card that, that, that's going to because it'll open up this whole town. Um, plenty of loot locations. And I think this one might overlap these a little bit. So, And then we'll, we'll focus on these ones later on down the road. Because I don't need to go up there for anything. So they're not going to bother me whatsoever. Yeah, that'll be the, the next heart I do. Now, I, I do still have some grenades. Um, we keep this up. I'm buying everyone a beer. Yeah, I got four more grenades, so we could do the same method we did on the last heart. But when it comes to crafting... Get this water turned on. And then converting food into fuel. So give me three food will get me two fu uh, fuel, which is pretty good, actually. So our farm is what? Level one? Boost yields right now. Oh, yeah, we got to get this farm upgraded. We'll start. Uh, we'll start manufacturing our own biofuel. So we're, we're definitely gonna need it. That'll put us in a good spot, guys. We gotta start manufacturing some uh, some throwables here. So I'm thinking, you know, fuel bombs. We can go ham on those. Pipe bombs. The only the only issue is going to be the parts cost. Remote box mines aren't even worth it. They're so expensive. C4 is so expensive. It's all good though. But we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna make do with what we got, chat. We're gonna keep pushing. Um, I got a couple grenades that we're gonna use that we can. Hyper auditory mutation. Zombies seem to have acquired a mutation that gives them blurred vision, but sense hypersensitive hearing. Okay. That's a new one. <laughs> we'll see how this goes, guys. But again, thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, I said we, we got some big things done. We got moved, play card done. Um, we're going to try to clear out the middle of that town so we can get a nice big loot run going. Um, and, you know, big spe a sell fest to all of our allies and then go from there. But uh, thank you guys again. I appreciate all the love support. Remember, if you guys are enjoying us, smash that like button. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.